to talk a little bit about the moon. You know, the moon is the thing which is in the gravity of the Earth's sphere, and the moon affects very much our daily influences in our lives. Obviously, Mr. Lietzgallen thought it was important because he has the three phases of the moon that he's carved in coral here. It's really something. And when you think that the entire state of Florida is made out of coral, and coral at one time was a living creature, and that that living creature relied on the tides, then we're back to the idea of the moon. So I think that the moon figured very, very strongly, as did all of the planets, in Mr. Lietzgallen's garden. Yeah. I'm sitting on one of the moon sculptures, and I'm sitting right next to the Polaris telescope. If you see just above that little green sign, there's a tiny hole, which you probably can't see, but if you look directly through that hole up to the big hole, that is showing you the direct alignment to the star Polaris, which is also known as the North Star. It's the star that sailors use to navigate. And perhaps Mr. Lietzgallen was thinking about the direction of due north when he was thinking about his Sweet Sixteen and their home in Latvia. Mr. Leedscallen wrote several pamphlets as to how exactly he manipulated these massive tons, as this one that's behind me, this door that you can literally push with one finger. Did he do it with magnetic currents? Some people have theorized perhaps it was solar energy. I really don't know how he could have possibly done it and defy the laws of gravity. I'm standing here in front of a nine-ton coral door, which you can literally push with one finger. Did he do this with very simple mechanics? Did he do it with solar energy? Did he do it by mag somehow harnessing magnetic currents, as he called it in the pamphlets that he wrote? I'm not quite sure how Edward Leedsgallen defied gravity. Is that Can you, um, well, let's get the connection first. Can you, can you take this under the tree, because yeah, we're... Let's hear the connection. Yeah, just a minute. That's better. That's a bueno. Okay, now it's, no, put, it, put it lower down. Please. Yeah, just tell me if you have a connection first. I, I hear it. But Do you I, hear me? Yeah, you hear it? I'll just like that. All right, can you hear me now? Well, yeah, but you mustn't touch it. I'm not going to touch it. Okay. Can you hear me? I hear you perfectly. It's very good. I don't know what I'm going to say, though. Oh, here, let me get you. I'm sitting here at a table that's in the shape of a heart. Now hearts are symbols that have been used by mankind throughout history. We think of it as being a Valentine's Day. Perhaps it was a Valentine's to his sweet 16. But many, many cultures use the heart to symbolize many different parts of their emotional well-being. As you can see, this oh, is... Have to go to go. As you can see, this table is in the shape of the state of Florida. And I am sitting exactly where the Coral Castle is located. 
In the middle here is Lake Okeechobee. Water is a very important part in Florida. We're surrounded by seawater, but there's very little fresh water. It doesn't actually extend down into the Keys and beyond into Cuba, but I think he wanted Florida to have a very special place. You can see I'm sitting at a table here that is shaped in the st state of Florida. The state of Florida is a very, very special place made out of entirely out of coral. If you followed this down to the end, if there were more of this table, there would be the Keys and Cuba. But I am sitting exactly where the Coral Castle is. We're sit I am sitting here at a table that is... Do I have to start again? Because I didn't hear the first part. I don't know why. Because it says that you don't start hearing it until the picture is all the way in. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, can you move the can you move the slide down? I can remember. <laughs> As you can see, I am sitting here at a table that is in the shape of the state of Florida. Mr. Leedsgallon made it in this shape because he believed that Florida was a very special place. In the center is Lake Okeechobee, and where I'm sitting is exactly where the home, where, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here at a table that he created in the shape of the state of Florida. In the center is Lake Okeechobee, and where I'm sitting is exactly where the Coral Castle is located, just south of Miami in a town called Homestead. He created this table with the chairs around it so that the governor could come with the various people in positions of power and they could discuss the things that needed to be taken care of in the state of Florida. He created this very special place for all of us to come and enjoy. We can picnic here and have a wonderful time. I'm seated here at a table that he made that is exactly the shape of the state of Florida. In the center is Lake Okeechobee, and where I'm sitting is where the Coral Castle is actually located, just south of Miami. I'm sitting here at a table that was created exactly in the shape of the state of Florida. Lake Okeechobee is here in the middle, and where I'm sitting is exactly where the Coral Castle is, just south of Miami in a town called Homestead. Mr. Leedsgallon hoped the people would come here, particularly the governor, and they could sit and talk about all the things that needed to be done and taken care of in the state of Florida. Well, it's been a long day at the Coral Castle, and now I think it's time to go to sleep. So I'm going to have a little lay down. Bye bye.
And here in the Repentance Corner, we have our wonderful camera video crew. It's Yapling Inc. and they do wonderful, wonderful videos. Peter Cunningham and... <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> And here in the Repentance Corner, we have our wonderful camera crew. They're called Peter Eves and Gina Cunningham, and their company is called Yapling Inc., and they do great videos. And finally, in the Repentance Corner, we have the publisher of this wonderful website, Absolutely Florida. Barbara. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry again. And finally, in the Repentance Corner, we have the publisher of this wonderful website, Absolutely Florida, Barbara Bowes. Now, don't drive too fast as you're coming down US-1 because you have to look out for this wonderful kitsch sign of the Coral Castle. Many aspects of this, make, of this place make you feel like you're something out of a science fiction movie, which I think is part of the pleasure. This is Mary Michelle. Thank you. Don't drive too fast when you're coming down US-1 or you'll miss this very funky sign of the Coral Castle. Don't you think it's sort of kitsch, something out of the 1940s? This is the place that we're going to spend the next half hour. No, sorry. When you're driving down US-1 from Miami towards Homestead... No, I'll start again. Don't drive too fast as you're coming down US-1 to the Coral Castle. You might miss this rather kitschy sign. But what the sign shows is not what you'll see once you get inside to this wonderful, mysterious place. You will be seeing an unusual accomplishment. You will be seeing an unusual accomplishment here at the Coral Castle.
This is Mary Michelle for WVIP. The 1938 feature Made for Each Other has a marvelous cast. Carol Lombard as the lively, confident, and endearing wife. James Stewart as a hard-working, responsible, and loving husband. We share her enthusiasm, her achievement of motherhood in her line, Don't you think he's just beautiful? As we never doubt his yearbook quote of, The Most Likely to Succeed. This film, having been made in the height of the Great Depression, has the marvelous housekeeper Lily reminding us to spit out those watermelon seeds. Charles Coburn, as the judge, is wonderfully cantankerous with his oversized hearing apparatus. The directorial style of John Cromwell is seamless, and it is as if producer David O. Selznick's motto, in a tradition of quality, is well accomplished. After a message from our sponsor, please sit back and enjoy the show. I'm Mary Michelle for WVIP. This is Mary Michelle for WVIP. The 1934 movie, Call It Murder, with Humphrey Bogart and Sidney Fox, gives us some good dramatic moments. The story reminds me of Portia in The Merchant of Venice and her classic speech, The Quality of Mercy Be Not Strained. The opening scene as the camera pans over the faces of the jury and others in the courtroom is full of anticipation. You feel the dilemma of compassion versus justice. The opening line, you see, I loved him, sets the pace for this psychodrama concerning the issue of capital punishment versus the quality of mercy. From a play by Paul and Claire Sifton called Midnight, the director, Chester Erskine, handles the play of shadows in this black and white feature with finesse. The foreman of the jury paces back and forth behind the bars on his staircase as the accused murderess paces behind the bars in her cell. Something we don't see on today's courtroom TV is the legal right of a jury member to question the witness. In the end, is the letter of the law to be held in higher esteem than the element of human emotional truth? Sidney Fox, as the foreman's daughter, is the character that presents us with this dilemma. We are torn by her personal tragedy. Bogey has wonderful style as the tough guy with no heart. After a message from our sponsors, please sit back and enjoy Call It Murder with Humphrey Bogart and Sidney Fox. Campus, a line of people as far as the eye can see, holding candles in remembrance of.